Meanwhile, Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi is on a two-day visit to Russia, where he's meeting his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin for the first time since he came into power in late June 2012. Morsi is accompanied by a high-level ministerial delegation who will take part in a mini-summit with Putin to promote bilateral ties, particularly trade relations and Russian investment in Egypt's energy, transport and engineering sectors. Morsi and Putin are also expected to discuss the Syrian crisis, the Middle East peace process and efforts to make the region a nuclear-free zone. Egypt and Russia hold different positions on the Syrian issue, as Putin is a powerful ally of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, while Morsi has repeatedly called on Assad to step down. Well, let's get more on Musa's visit to Moscow. We're joined live by Daria Bondichuk in Moscow. Daria, the two leaders have been meeting. What's the latest? Well, the latest have been reported by the, uh, there's been a statement by the presidential aide uh, Yuri Ushakov who said that Russia did receive a request uh, from Egypt uh, for a uh, loan for financial aid. This has been um, anticipated and ahead of the talks have been um, rumors that the Egypt may request a two billion uh, US dollar uh, loan to be granted. And the presidential aide said that uh, the respective um, Financial bodies, uh, governmental bodies, will be in contact uh, shortly to uh, discuss the details of such financial aid to be granted to Egypt. Um, and um, this is, uh, I guess, important for um, this is one of the things that uh, Egypt was hoping for, as because has, it has been uh, turned down for uh, by the IMF for its request um, for a 4.8 billion uh, US dollar loan uh, that has been going in uh, negotiations around it has been going on for a while. Also, um, Egypt did uh, suggest to Russia to um, proceed and um, revisit the plans of constructing a nuclear energy uh, plant um, in Egypt. Um, is this, prog this project has been in discussion, and um, so the parts uh, Rosatom Russian um, uh, nuclear agency, constructing agency, will um, attend um, to this request and possibly uh, participate, fly a delegation to Egypt to um, discuss this project. And also, uh, Egypt has suggested Russia to uh, take um, part in developing and um, 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 to de into developing its nuclear, uh, uh, its uranium deposits in the country. And Russia may be also interested in that. Uh, so we can um, see a scale of um, energy cooperation um, contracts and financial cooperation um, boosted here during these talks. Darian, you did mention that financial aid is one of the key things discussed in, this, in the meeting. And we do know President Morsi is keen to jumpstart Egypt's economy, which, as you know, has been doing really badly of late. So how likely is he to attract Russian investors? Well, uh, Russian investors uh, may be may have been a bit hesitant uh, since the um, unrest have sort of stepped up in Egypt. And, um, for example, one of the Russian energy companies, uh, gas producing uh, Novotek, has withdrawn from Egypt uh, back in February uh, last year. So uh, it is unclear um, how how soon the Russian investors will um, return to Egypt um, and on what scale. But definitely this effort between the two leaders uh, will um, encourage them to, um, I guess, reconsider the risks and uh, see Egypt um, as yet uh, an, uh, a new uh, a destination for their investments. Uh, maybe some analysts have said that the recent um, financial crisis in Cyprus um, could um, possibly um, instigate, as a, um, help some Russian investors to reconsider the direction of uh, their future investments and um, who knows, maybe um, Egypt will be one of those new destinations for Russian capital. D D Daria, let's finally talk about the divergent uh, opinions uh, on the Syrian crisis, of course, held by both uh, Egypt and Russia. Uh, the two leaders, of course, are set to discuss this ongoing crisis. There is there a chance of any convergence between their opposing positions? Well, uh, there have been no indications so far whether Russia will um, change its initial uh, position, its opinion um, on the Syrian crisis. From the very beginning, uh, Moscow has been uh, calling 
on the um, an acceptance, uh, saying that it's unacceptable for foreign uh, forces to interfere into the conflict, and that uh, the Syrian people should uh, decide who, you know, own their leaders and own their uh, rule uh, for themselves. It's not up to any external powers to um, intervene and. Um, sort of impose any one or the other way of development for the Syrian um, for the Syrian people so Russia has been firmly standing on this position from the beginning of the conf uh, of this conflict and um, is of course looking for um, talking to all sides of the conflict and encouraging um, all all participants of this conflict inside the Syria and outside the Syria and all the players in the region uh, to try to find diplomatic solutions uh, to this conflict and avoid at all means um, uh, any military solutions that Russia um, has um, uh, cons consistently proclaimed um, unacceptable. All right, Daria Bundichik live in Russia. Thank you for joining us now.